So you've had a brief introduction to App Lab and played around with making a little uh, app that you could send to your phone. Um, so today we're going to dig a little deeper into App Lab and JavaScript and the formatting to, to do some simple coding. So today we're going to do an introduction to variables and loops, and then you can start off with App Lab number two. So first of all, we're going to start talking about loops. Now remember that a for loop um, a for loop is kind of a counter loop, so it'll let you do a very specific uh, number of repetitions. Um, this would be equivalent to the repeat loop in Scratch, where you say repeat four times. So this would be equivalent to a repeat four times type of loop. A while loop could, could have any duration, depending on what would trigger it to stop. So a while loop is much more like a repeat until loop. Now, one of the dangers of a while loop is that you can create infinite loops. So we will take a look at that and what that problem is. So let's go ahead and jump over and get into some code. Um, now, what I encourage you to do right now is pause the video and go open up a window, a tab, with App Lab up and open so you can code alongside of me. Um, and we can build this code together. So I'm going to get into max, uh, show blocks mode. Um, one thing I want to tell you is that um, I've named this file loop practice. When you create a new file, it's going to be called Untitled. So go ahead and click Rename, and then give it a name that will help you to remember the lesson. So if you want to go back and grab that code uh, for a future date, you'll have it. Okay, so we're going to deal with loops, first of all. Loops are under our control structure. So to grab a loop, I'm going to go over here. Oh, did you notice that when I was doing a mouse over, I got a little instruction? And there's lots of good examples. So if you're not sure how to use one of these structures, just go to the examples. That's the best way to figure it out. Um, okay, so I'm going to say for, uh, and this is var, var i. So this is the default way that the, the structure comes in. i is an index or a counter variable. So we're going to start with i being set to 0, and then as long as i is less than 4, it's going to work through this loop. And then when it gets to the end of the loop, then i++. plus plus. What that means is it's going to increment i by 1. So i++ plus plus is a sort of shorthand, shortcut to say increment i by 1. So for the first uh, uh, time we're going to work this, we're just going to have a little uh, a little console log message. Um, and so I'm going to hit console log. So now if I run this code, if I run this code, what you'll see down here in my little console is the word message four different times. And that's not very interesting. Um, but you get a sense that it did run through the code four times. Uh, one thing that we point out in, I'm going to say, uh, counter i and then I'm going to actually print out what that variable is instead of just saying message. Um, one thing you'll notice is that when we do an index in JavaScript and in almost all coding languages, we don't start with one. We always start with zero. It's sort of it, I could say it was like say a European thing. You know, in the United States, if you live on the first floor, that's considered the ground floor. But if you're in Europe and you're on the first floor, that's considered the first floor up. Zero floor is the ground floor. So that's kind of how we do it with with coding is the very first number is going to be a zero and then we count up from there. So if I run this code now, I get counter i is zero, one, two, three. So again, it's operated four times, but my counter has gotten up to the number three. So uh, you could change the number if I want to make this ten times, if I want to make it thousand times, run the code, and it will continue to, to, to do that behavior. So again, now I've got ten iterations. I count from zero to nine. Okay, so um, I want to comment out this code right now. And what that means is I don't want to lose the code, but I don't want it to be executing all the time. So when we want to do a comment in JavaScript, we do it with a slash slash. So I might put something that says practice with four loops. And that tells me what it is I'm working on. So the next person who's reading it can understand. Now this code, I don't want it to operate anymore, but I kind of don't want to delete it either. So I'm going to comment it out. So one way to do that is to put a slash slash at the beginning of every line. And now you notice everything turns green. It's now no longer going to execute. If I go to show blocks mode, it is all grayed out because it's commented out. Now there's another way to do it. If you want to comment out multiple lines of code, there's kind of a shortcut. And the shortcut is, let me get rid of these guys. The shortcut is to have a slash and then a star and then end with a star and a slash. So it's like, Open, th this would mean open up your comment, and this means close your comment. So once again, this is all in green. Okay, so if I go back here, it's grayed out. It's not going to execute. If I hit run, nothing's going to happen. Uh, okay, 
Now I want to do a while loop. So I'm going to go back to my control structures and I'm going to do a while loop. And in order to do a while loop, you have to have some sort of a conditional. So I'm going to try to mimic the for loop for, for just a minute. I'm going to say, I'm going to bring this conditional in and I need to have a variable um, that I'm going, to, I'm going to increment. So let's declare a variable. Um, it doesn't do it within the code, kind of like it did with the for loop. So I'm going to declare the variable up here. I'm going to call my variable. Let's sneak it in there. I'm trying to sneak it in. There we go. I'm going to call my variable j. j is another typical counter letter that we use. So I'll set j equal to 0. And I'm going to say, OK, well, j is less than 4. Uh, then I want to, to kind of do what I did up here before, which is I'm going to set, send a message to the console log. And I'm going to say console log. I'm going to say counter j. And then I'm going to say, I'm going to say plus plus, and then j. So it should say counter and then count up as I, as I loop through it, OK? So let's go ahead and run the code and see what happens. OK, nothing is, wait, something is happening. I'm getting counter j equals 0, 0, 0 a whole bunch of times. And it's like it's locked out, like it's not doing anything. See how this debug is spinning? This is not good. So what's happening right now is I have got myself in an infinite loop. So I'm going to hit this reset button a couple times and hopefully it'll kick out of it. OK, good, I'm out of it. After a while, it just times out and you're back. So what happened there? I said, I said j equal to 0, and then I said, well, j is less than 4. Do this council log. And then it did it a zillion times because I never incremented my j. So I need to have inside this while loop an actual incrementation of that j. So I could say um, x. I'm going to grab this variable. It's not going to be j. It's going to be j. It's going to be equal to j plus 1, or j plus 2, or j plus 3, however you want to change it. OK, now it's going to get incremented. That j value is going to count up. And when it gets to be less than 4, so when it gets up to 4, it's basically going to stop. So let's run it now. And there we go. j is 0, 1, 2, 3. So we were able to get this while loop to look just like a for loop. Um, but there might be another case where you want to have uh, something else in a while loop, like, um, like until something is true, you might want to have a behavior. So I'm going to have another variable. And I'm going to say variable flag equals true. So I'm going to set it to, to true, OK? And then I'll say while, while, and I'll put an operator in here. And this equals equals means while something is equal to something else. So it's a conditional type of equals. So I'll say while flag equals true, then I want to run through this operation. Now, if I hit go right now, it's going to be an infinite loop. It's going to keep on going, um, unless I do something inside my code that's going to change that flag. So I'm going to put a little conditional in here. And you guys have seen these before. So I'm just going to say if, if j, let's say, let's say if j is, um, let's say if j is greater than, if j is greater than 15, OK? If j is greater than 15, then what I'm going to do is I'm going to set the flag to be false. So I'll go flag. Flag and be creative with your variable names. I and J are typically counters, but otherwise use variable names that make sense to you. Flag equals false. Okay, so hopefully this is going to work. Let's give it a run. And there we go. Counter started at zero. It went up to 15. Once it got to 15, so now J is greater than 15. Then it set the flag to false, and um, and then we're good. We, we then we kick out of the loop and stop. So that's another way to use um, a while loop. Okay, let's talk a little bit about variables. Uh, in Scratch, we would typically declare a variable and it would be considered a, glo a, a global variable almost all the time, which meant that if you were to set a variable in one place, it would be remembered somewhere else as the exact same value. So um, in JavaScript, it's going to be different because you have to be really careful with your variables. A variable defined in one part of the code can be used again and again in another part, change its value, and even change it back again. And I'm going to give you some sample code. You'll see what I mean. So to avoid confusion, um, be creative with your variable names and avoid reusing them. Um, and if you have to be reusing them, then be really mindful of the fact that they might change values and what your value that you thought was remembered might get forget forgotten, which sounds confusing. But let's show you an example, OK? So um, take a look at this code, and we're going to predict the output. What do you expect will happen? And it says, note the variable x 
can represent a string or a number. You can set a variable in JavaScript to, to anything you want. It could be string, it could be number, it could be text, it could be another variable. So, so here we go. So var x equals hello. So at first x is going to be hello, then it's a console log outside loop, and then x. So the first thing it's going to print is it's going to say outside loop, and then it's going to say hello. All right, then it kind of gets in, it gets in here to this for loop. And now we set up a variable in here, and var x is now going to set equal to zero, not hello anymore. And then while x is less than three, and then it's going to increment x, it's going to say, okay, inside loop, and then the value of x. So probably the first value is going to be zero, and then maybe one, and then maybe two, and then maybe three, maybe not three, let's see. Uh, and then once we get outside this loop, after it's finished, we're going to be back at here, console lot, outside, lot, outside loop, it's going to tell us that value of x again. Hmm, what will that be? And then down here, we're going to change x to by now, and then we're going to print that out. Okay, so let's run this code and see what it looks like. Incidentally, you notice how we have comments in here to help us follow along with the code? Um, that's just good programming technique to put little comments in. Okay, so we're going to take this little code. Here it is. Uh, same code you just saw. Let's run it and see what we get in our console log. Let's bring this up a little bit. So we get the outside loop. It says hello. And then when you go inside the, the for loop, that value gets changed to zero. And then it gets incremented to one and then two. And then now it's done. But notice that after it's done with the loop, it's still incremented x by one. Like when it finished this loop, it incremented by one and then x is no longer less than three, so it jumps back out. Okay, so then x now has the value of three. And so the outside loop, it prints out three. And then out here again, we've changed the value of x to by now, and so now we get by now. So that's the idea. So you could have a variable and you could be changing it somewhere and then it could forget where it was. So it might have been hello here, but then it got changed and then it didn't remember the hello once it got outside that loop. Okay, so we just gotta be careful. We'll play around this a little bit more. Okay, so uh, this week, what you want to work on is App Lab number two. You're going to do, it has two parts to it, basically. Let's just take a look at the, app, the, at the lab real quick. Um, it has two parts to it. It has the first part, which is playing around with the App Lab and drawing, making a little game. Um, and I've given you some starter code that'll help you get it going. And I want you to think about what do these numbers do? What does this RGB do? What does that do? What is this 320 or 350? What does that mean? So I ask you some questions about it. Now, notice that I have given you both the the uh, a picture of the code and the actual text. So this is pretty cool because if you have a text, you can just copy it and you can grab it and you can go over to to your code. Let's go back over here and I could just paste it in there. So let's say I'm gonna add this under my loop practice. I just go paste and there's a code and now you can run it. So it's pretty slick how you can just copy and paste. Um, so run that code, figure out what it does and then you're gonna ask, answer these questions. Um, and then when you finish, uh, finish with that starter, then you're going to add some buttons to it, you're going to make a little game out of it, it's really fun, you're going to be able to paint and, and have it follow your mouse and make cool little designs. Um, so follow the instructions and you can make this cool little app that you can then send to your phone. It does ask you, when you're running it on a mobile device, does it work the same as it does in your emulator or in your browser? Um, so think about why it may or may not. Uh, and then make some uh, adjustments to the code. If you follow this link right here, this takes you to a similar version of the code, but it says, okay, here, try this, try to add this to make it fancier or harder or more interesting. Okay, so that's the first half is to create that little lab. And then the second part, uh, and you gotta submit your URL, put it put it in your Google Doc, and then also go to the Google form and submit it there. Um, and then I have some loop and conditionals practice for you. So, so try to figure out and anticipate what the output of this particular code will be. So guess what it is, and then Go over to App Lab and code it and see what it actually does and see if you were right. You get more familiar with how these loops work. So I've got several different versions here. Try to predict what your output, output is going to be. And then at the very end, I have, uh, I, I'll do some in text as opposed to the picture code. So you should be able to interpret this the same way. You should be able to go back and forth between the text and the block version. And the last thing I ask you to write your own for loop and a while loop that will print the numbers one to six on the console. Um, Develop your lives with block or text, whatever what you want. But then when you're done, put it in text mode, copy that text, and stick it right in here. And then you'll turn in your Google Doc uh, into Google Classroom. Okay, good luck and have fun.